Hey! In Angular, we often need our parent components to communicate with their child components, and we've used input properties for that communication. Starting in Angular version 17.1, we now have signal-based inputs as an alternative to input properties. That makes it easier to react to changes to those inputs. In this video, we examine the new Signal Inputs feature and outline its benefits. Let's jump right in. I'm using StackBlitz as a quick way to build a sample application. Here is a snack list template that displays this list of snacks. We can see the result here in the preview window. We display the page title and column headings. Then we loop through each snack and display its name and price. Is this four block syntax new to you? If so, consider watching my video, Angular's new template syntax, Control Flow. That video is linked above and in this video's notes. You could replace this with the ng4 directive if you choose. OK. We use the snack list component in the snack component. Here we have a navigation bar and reference the snack list component to display the list of snacks. Since the snack component uses another component, it's considered to be the parent component, and any component it uses is called a child component. By dividing this functionality into multiple components, we can more easily create, maintain, and reuse components. Let's say we've been asked to modify the snack list component, our child component, so any component that uses it, that is to say any parent component, can pass in a string to filter the list. In our parent component, we declare a property to hold the filter value. We'll call it listFilter and initially set it to an empty string. We want to pass the value of this variable to the snack list component. The snack list component can then use the value to filter the list of snacks to only those that contain the provided string. Looking at the snack list component, our task is to pass the filter criteria into this child component. Prior to Angular version 17.1, we'd use an input property anytime we need to pass information from a parent component to a child component. Let's do that first, get it working, and then shift to the signal input, at input parentheses, and we'll call the property filter criteria equals, and we'll default it to an empty string. A filter criteria of empty string should display all of the snacks. And we'll use the quick fix to add the needed import. Next, we'll add code to actually filter the list. Historically, we'd write our code in the onChanges lifecycle hook, which executes every time an input property changes. So every time the parent component passes in a new filter value, the onChanges event occurs, and code in ngOnChanges would execute. But that lifecycle hook isn't very user-friendly. I'll undo that. There's got to be a better way. Notice here we get the list of snacks from a service. Hovering over snacks, it's a signal. So the easiest way to filter the snacks is to use a computed signal. Filtered snacks equals computed. We pass to the computed signal an arrow function. It takes no parameters, so we specify empty parentheses, then an arrow, and the computed expression. We call this dot snacks to reference the signal and use parentheses to read the array of snacks from that signal. Next, we call the filter method of the array to only include the snack in the filtered list if the name of the snack includes the text from the passed in input property and use the quick fix to add the import for computed. The filtered snacks signal should then contain the list of snacks, filtered to only those that contain the passed in filter criteria. Will this work? We'll see in a moment. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. We'll see why shortly. Now we need to change the template to bind to this filtered set of snacks. So instead of snacks, filtered snacks. That's all we need for this child component. Next, we'll change the parent component to pass in the filter criteria. Here in our parent component, we pass the list filter value to the snack list component using property binding. Looking back at the snack list component, we called the input property 
filter criteria. So back in the snack component, we bind the snack list component filter criteria input property to the list filter variable from the snack component. Now we could just hard code in a value for this list filter, but let's add some HTML to display an input element so the user can enter the list filter. It's a chunk, so I'll paste it in. Here we use two-way binding. Any value the user enters is stored in the list filter property. And then we pass that value along to the snack list child component. Looking at the preview window, let's enter a filter of nut. But nothing happens. It doesn't appear to be working. Bummer. Looking back at the snack list component code, any idea why it doesn't filter the list? Let's focus on the computed signal. It automatically re-executes if the snacks signal changes. But it won't recompute if the filter criteria changes, because the filter criteria is not a signal. It's currently an input property. Computed signals only recalculate if one of its signals change. We could add code to manually create a signal and set it to the value of the input property. But wouldn't it be so much easier if our input property was just a signal? Starting with Angular version 17.1, we can use signal inputs instead of input properties. Yay! How would that work? First, we change our filter criteria from an input property to a signal input, like this. Filter criteria equal input parentheses and we'll use the quick fix to add the needed import. We initially want the filter criteria to be empty, so we set an empty string within the parentheses. Next, we change the computed property to read our new signal by adding parentheses. Will this work? Enter a filter by string, and it works! Nice! Let's try another one. Cool! But watch this. If we use an uppercase letter instead of a lowercase letter, it stops working. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do some transformations in our signal inputs? The good news is that we can. The second argument of the input function is for options. We can use the options to define a value transformation. We want the value to always be lowercase, so our transform would look something like this. We add curly braces for the options object. We set the transform function to an arrow function. For strong typing, we specify that the incoming value is a string. Then we use that value and call to local lowercase to ensure that the result is lowercase. Trying it out, notice that I'm typing uppercase letters, but the filter still works. Our code transforms the incoming input value to lowercase. Use a transform any time you need to coerce or parse the incoming value from the parent component before working with it in the child component. We can also use the input options to specify an alias. We can expose a more detailed or user-friendly name for the parent component to use, but then define a shorter or more technical name for use in the child component code. Say that the developers creating our parent components think of the property as list criteria, so we could define an alias with that name. The parent component can then use the alias name, list criteria. Typing in a filter, the code still works. But what if the parent component completely forgets to specify the signal input? If I type in a filter, it looks like the child component doesn't work. But in reality, the parent component forgot to pass in the user-entered filter criteria. Is there something we can do about that? Yep, we can make an input required. Going back to the snackless component, we can add dot .required onto our input. Since the value is required, we no longer need a default value, so remove the first argument. And we get a syntax error. Required input list criteria from component snack list component must be specified. The code won't compile unless the parent component passes in the required input. Here in the parent component, we'll undo our deletion to add back our input binding. Trying out a filter, and it again works. So why change from input properties to signal inputs? 
Well, we saw a big reason, so we can use the input in a computed signal. Computed signals make it easy to automatically rerun code when a signal changes, making our code very reactive. But it only works with signals. Some additional reasons to use signal inputs? They are more type safe because signals are strongly typed. And there is no need to work with ng on changes, which is somewhat challenging to use. Every time I've used it, I've had to look up how to get values out of it. Consider changing your input properties to signal inputs. Then use the comments to tell me how it went and what you think of signal inputs. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.